thank you for the invitation um, to talk about use and abuse of antibiotics in uh, neonatology. Sure, so why should we care about antibiotics in uh, neonatology? So as we heard, um, no question about it, we have a benefit for the individual. So if we have an infection and we treat the infection, as we heard from Christoph Bührer, the antibiotics is life-saving. We have as well a benefit on the community level. So the benefit is we can prevent the spread of some of the infections. And as we know since uh, decades, there is the risk for the community regarding antibiotic resistance. So what is not so well known, but it's coming up more and more in the last 10 years, is there is a, as well a cost on the individual baby that we are treating with antibiotics. We have the collateral damage that we are doing on their microbiota. So I like to um, give two, three minutes on this microbiome because it's very fascinating if you're reading about the microbiome and probably it will change how we are doing medicine in the next 10, 20 years. So we see usually the microbiome as we as humans are here and there are some bacteria on the skin, in the gut, and they are living with us. And uh, the reality is probably the other way around. So we are living with a community of bacteria because the bacterial cells are 10 times more than our human cells. And in the genes, the factor is even around 100. So what happens if we are start with antibiotic? So we start an antibiotic and the diversity of our bacterial community is going down. This depends on what kind of antibiotic we are giving and this depends on how long we are the antibiotics giving. Then after end of treatment, there is a slowly recovery and the diversity is coming back. So we may say as a clinician at the bedside, that's fine. We have a problem for a few days or weeks. Perhaps there is a diarrhea, but in the end, all is fine. Unfortunately, we are neonatologists, so we are treating our patients in a very vulnerable time. So if you look, this is a mouse model where they looked on the colonization, and there is an impact on the colonization on the immune system. So if you have no colonization, of, or if you have a colonization very late, after some time in mouse, this is four weeks, we have no idea about this time window in humans, or if you have a colonization with a low diversity, then this mice had a high EGE level and they had a trend to anaphylaxis. More, these bacteria in the gut, they interact with our stem cells and they interact how the proliferation of these stem cells happens. So if you are giving antibiotic, then we are intervening in this process. And this maybe is one of the explanations why giving antibiotics early in life may have an impact on the health later in life. Even more, Christian Kind mentioned that in the morning, we know that the microbiome of the mother and the, and the question if the mother is treated with antibiotics or not has an impact on the microbiome on the neonate and as well for the health later in life. So in summary, looking on the, on the literature, these are the diseases that currently are associated with antibiotic treatments early in life. We already have seen this slide by Christoph Bührer um, with the antibiotic use and the increased mortality and chronic lung disease and drop disease. And of course, there is the questions, are the baby just thicker? But I think in the end, we have to ask the question and we have to consider that perhaps the antibiotic itself is one factor that may be a problem for mortality and morbidity among um, these infants. So to conclude, I think everyone who is prescribing antibiotics should care about the costs and the benefit of antibiotics. 
So what we are doing in our NICUs with antibiotics, are we doing the same? No. So this is a study from California. They looked at about more than 100 NICUs, and they found a 40-fold variation in antibiotic days. 40-fold. That's, that's huge. So there are some units. They have very minimal days on antibiotics, and there are other, probably more or less 100% of their days, were antibiotic days. This was independent of proven infection or neck, and this was as well independent of mortality. Do we know what antibiotics we are using, or are we in agreement? This is a study from the Netherlands. They looked about 10 NICUs, and as you can see, every color is another antibiotic uh, class, and the picture um, is, is very colored, and at least in the Netherlands, they are not in agreement what they are giving on their NICUs. How is the situation in Switzerland? We don't know, really. Um, we have in the MNS data um, one item asking, are we giving our preterm infant below 32 weeks antibiotics for five days or more without positive culture? And looking on this in 2015, when these data are true, then we have about three units. They are giving more or less never antibiotics for five days or more. And there are other units that are giving more to a third or to half of their babies below 32 weeks antibiotics for five days or more with negative culture. Of course, we have to consider that perhaps they have a different system of culture. Perhaps there is a difference in sepsis-related mortality. This has to be looked at, but I think it's remarkable, and we can conclude there is a high variability of antibiotic use um, in our NICUs. So, for what are we using our antibiotics? I think that's similar slide that Christoph Buer showed. About 89% in this study, this is a surveillance study from the United States, were used for rule-out sepsis or for culture-negative situations like culture-negative sepsis or pneumonia. So, what is about the number needed to treat with antibiotics to have a proven infection? So, I looked in the literature and I found uh, several um, publications, ROM from the group from ERIC from Lausanne. They looked on late preterm on term babies. 222 had an antibiotic therapy. Three out of them had a sepsis. So it gives a number of, to treat uh, from 74. In Norway, this is the only published population-based study that I know regarding antibiotic use in term babies. They had about 4,000 babies treated with antibiotics, and this was the lowest number that I found in the number needed to treat us as 44 to have one proven infection. Neopins is our procalcitonin um, study, so far not published, hopefully soon. So we had 1,740 babies in Switzerland, in the Netherlands, in Prague, and in Canada, and we had a number needed to treat of 64. And when you go now to the United States, there are publication with number needed to treat from 154, or if you look on a special situation, or a special risk situation like chorionitis, there was the number needed to treat of 138. Now, of course, we can say, well, but it's very dangerous to have sepsis, so we have to treat very much babies to, to have no mortality. So what's about the mortality? So in Lausanne, there were none. In the Neopin study, we had non-sepsis-related mortality. In Norway, there was one baby dying on a GBS sepsis, and in the USA, and even by chorionitis, there was a very low number. So in the USA, for example, you have to treat more than 11,000 babies to have one baby who will die on sepsis. Of course, we don't want to have dead babies, but at least we have to think about, are these numbers reasonable? So I think we can conclude regarding the start of therapy, we have a high number needed to treat for proven infection in term, at least in term and late preterm um, babies. What about the duration of antibiotic therapy? Um, again, this study from Norway, looking on how long do they treat their babies. For culture proven sepsis, they treated eight days. For culture negative sepsis, they had a mean of six days. For rule out sepsis, four days. 
So that gives an overall duration of antibiotic therapy for the whole group of 4.8 days. This is a study from the US. Just babies with culture negative situations or with rule out sepsis and they had a mean duration of 5.3 days in this situation. The range in different NICUs was between 3.2 and 8.6 days. This is a publication from 2016 and not from 2000. Um, it was also obvious that NICUs with a higher number of newborns started on antibiotics had a significant longer course. So it's not true that NICUs that started early could say, well, we start early, but we finish early, so we had a short uh, course. At least in this study, this was not true. Um, another study um, looking on the duration found as well about 50% had a treatment in culture negative situation for three to five days. Interesting here to see babies treated for more or equal five days. In 62%, the reason was a pneumonia. I think it's very difficult to diagnose a pneumonia in preterm or term babies. I don't know how they have done it. Of course, there is nothing mentioned uh, in this publication. So I think we can conclude that the duration of antibiotic therapy for suspected infection, for culture negative infection, is probably often prolonged. So okay, now having this, this facts, the question is, so what, is there anything what, what we can do? Can we make it better? I Coming back to the study from Lausanne, um, the study was primarily not focused on duration of antibiotic therapy. It was they looked at is a laboratory um, measurement really helpful regarding the decision to start antibiotic therapy. So they had two cohorts. In the first cohort, they had just the national guidelines. And for the second cohort, they made a special uh, policy how to treat baby and how to do it. And the interesting um, point here is looking on the data, they had a duration without a protocol of 77.5 hours. And in the second period, with the protocol, the local, they came down to 64.2 hours. Comparing these results to Norway, in the Norway publication, they uh, mentioned that they didn't have any guidelines regarding antibiotic therapy. Um, we remember we had 4.8 days. In the USA, in this huge population, we had 5.3 days. In the Neopin study, we had um, a protocol as well for the standard group. And our duration of antibiotic therapy for the whole group in the standard group was very similar to the data in Lausanne with 65 hours. We have to uh, mention this publication because guidelines and protocols may have an adverse effect. And perhaps it's not what we... Um, wanted to do. So this study is about the NICE guidelines in the UK. Uh, probably, as you know, the NICE guidelines requested or asked to do a CRP with 18 hours after starting antibiotics. And they hoped with this CRP it was possible to shorten the duration of antibiotic therapy, to come down with lumbar punctures. And what happened was exactly the contrary. So the duration of antibiotic therapy was prolonged. The stay in the hospital was prolonged, and the number of lumbar, puncture, lumbar punctures went up. So protocols and guidelines, I think, may have a benefit. Now, of course, I have to say uh, something about the PCT. Um, PCT is just one out of many biomarkers, and I think one of the important things, if you're looking on a biomarker, we have to know what are the normal values for these biomarkers after birth. Because probably, as well, the CRP has some physiological increase after birth and not stay below 5 or below 10. And this is true as well for the PCT, where you can see here, this is what we used, this increased um, um, in the first three days of life. We had a, a protocol, so we tried to say, OK, were there any risk factors, yes or no? whether any clinical symptoms, whether some conventional laboratory findings like a leukocytopenia or a CRP above 10. And then we categorize them and say, OK, if you have just one point, there is a low risk. With two, we had a medium risk. Or if you had all three of them, a high risk. And then we had the culture positive um, infections. And we tried in the low and in the medium risk to do a PCT guidance 
trying to shorten antibiotic therapy. And we came down in the ITT analysis to 55 hours and in the per protocol analysis, analysis to 51 hours. I think this shows that it is possible to shorten antibiotic therapy. I'm quite sure it is possible with other biomarkers. I don't think that this is now a specific PCT um, thing that is that you can do this with, with other biomarkers. And I think the biomarkers is just a help. So if you are able to have a short duration of antibiotic therapy without any biomarkers, that's fine. Then probably you don't need them. But if you have doctors who are not able to make this decision, then a biomarker may help to do it. So biomarker guidance may help to shorten antibiotic therapy. As a last point, antibiotic stewardship, as you know, this is a, a big word. There is a recent publication in Lancet Infectious Disease. Um, I think this was a, a NICU in Texas. And they were able, with an intervention, to come down on the antibiotic use on their NICU. Looking at where was it possible to come down, it was a total amount of antibiotics. And as you can see here, it was especially possible in the suspected early onset sepsis. So the use on this NICU um, of antibiotics was focused on early onset sepsis. Number two, again, was this pneumonia. And as you can see, the suspected late onset sepsis and the culture proven infection, they were just a small part of their antibiotic use. Um, antibiotic stewardship is, if you hear that, all of us thinking about, oh, you need quite a lot of resources. You need the infectious disease specialists. You need this and that. So the question is, is it possible to do it not with, with lower resources? So these are the data from Lucerne. End of 2015, um, we had the impression we are using too much of antibiotics. We are, we are using too much of vancomycin or meropenem. So we said, let's try to come down on this um, antibiotics. So it was possible to come down uh, a relative on 17% regarding antibiotic days. And it was possible in our unit to come down with the vancomycin and the meropenem by around 50%. And the mortality at least was not increasing. So I think this shows it is possible. Of course, it really depends where you are. If you are using your antibiotics very carefully and very um, rare, then probably this is not possible, but at least in our situation, it was possible. So antibiotic surve surveillance and stewardship, I think, in any form, is mandatory for any NICU. So my take home message in the end is really this. I think when we are prescribing antibiotics, we really have to think about. and. The, the mindset that we probably, many of us have, we have a baby and we think, well, should I start with antibiotics? There is some risk, but the risk is not that high. Perhaps the baby has a little bit of tachypneic, but that's it. And then the mindset, oh, let's give some antibiotics, then we are safe. I think this is probably not true because probably there is a cost on the individual health regarding the damage on their microbiota. Thank you for your attention.